It's a Kane McDonald production show. Brought to you by the Kane McDonald Production Company. Many, many moons ago, the child that you see in front of you grew up to be one of the biggest singing superstars that the world has ever seen. Now, well, here you ask, who is it? Is it Chumba Wumba, Crazy Frog, or maybe even Tina from S Club 7? Well, no. That child grew up to be me! Kane McDonald, internationally acclaimed singing superstar, having performed on some of the world's greatest stages, such as Blackburn's Premier Working Men's Club, the Big Asda in Berry, and indeed the Palladium in Bradford. Now, I hear you wonder, how did this child become the beautiful, talented, amazing, handsome, humble, generously kind, very, very sexy young man that I am today. My story begins here, in the beautiful northern town of Fake Wales. Now, Fake Wales known for many things, such as producing the world's largest Greg steak bake on the 23rd of March 2001, also for hosting the annual Nolan Sister Tribute Act competition, and for producing me, internationally acclaimed singing superstar, Kane McDonald. Growing up in Fake Wales was nice, but it didn't come without its hardships. Today I've come back to visit Mother and discuss how hard it was growing up in fake wheels. What's this thing filming? Yeah. So, um, so here I am with Mother and do you remember how difficult it was for us growing up here in fake wheels? No. Yes. Well, Mum has, Mum has dementia. Sorry, I forgot to say. No. Mom, yes, you do. Yes, Mum, please. Please, you have dementia. I'm so sorry. So, growing up in fake world was hard. Mum, you did actually struggle to put food on the table, so she had to take up extra jobs. Um, sad but true. Mum did actually have to sell herself on the street. That's not me. No, it I is. Think. It is, Mum. It's, it is you. Mum, please. It is. But, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, times have changed, and that is a lovely photo of you. I think you could even stick that on your fridge. But it wasn't just selling herself on the street like a common whore. Mum did take up other jobs as well, such as um, she played Santa down at Fake Wheel Shopping Centre for five seasons in a row. And that was to get me a, a, a chocolate coin maker one year. I'll let you keep that one. I don't think you've got that copy. What are you doing? Mum actually was... <laughs> Why don't you tell them? She was Schmoo's original trainer at SeaWorld. It's not something that you like to talk about since the documentary's come out, but Schmoo actually loved you and you were his favourite. And you share quite a bond that most people don't with a killer whale. Um, so yeah, Schmoo actually once came over for Christmas dinner, you were that close. But Mum was also a performer, weren't you, Mum? Weren't you, Mum? Yeah. Yes. Uh, little do people know, Mum was actually in Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs oh, as a dwarf. Um, that was your starring role, your breakthrough role. You actually um, beat Shirley Temple to that role. Um, Mum's also good friends with Steven Spielberg. And you were Kate Winslet's body double in the film Titanic, where Jack paints her like one of his French girls, as you can tell. Lots of similarities. And Mum was also in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory alongside Johnny Depp, where she played an umpa lumpa. Um, Johnny Depp was actually so impressed by your performance that he offered her the role of Captain Jack Sparrow in Pirates of the Caribbean, but you did have to decline. 
because mum was actually dealing with a severe battle, she was heavily addicted to, to it's fine, you know, it's fine, it's, to blue smarties. But we overcome that. School for little Kane was, well, it was all right, to be fair. But I knew I was destined for bigger and better things than Fake World Community Primary School. So, as the years grew, so did I, because that's how time works. And I attended Fake Wheel General Church of England Community High School Secondary Referral Unit, where I developed my love of singing. My favourite teacher was our drama teacher, Miss Judged. And I loved the yearly summer shows. In lower school, I played narrator number 17 in Into the Woods, a tree in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and also a dog in Cats. Woof. Then, as I entered upper school, the roles got bigger. I got cast as the yellow brick road in The Wizard of Oz. I also got the role of Grease Lightning in Grease. I remember a time when we were putting on Funny Girl and the lead fell ill. So, me being the modest hero that I am, stepped into her tiny shoes and went on as the lead. The newspaper said that they'd never actually seen a fanny quite like mine before. Entering my twenties was when I decided to take my childhood hobby into adulthood. Singing for me was not only a talent that meant I was the world's greatest singing superstar, it was also something that my friends enjoyed. Kane's singing would drive me around the bend. Nobody enjoyed Kane's singing. Kane would never set up. Kane insisted on singing at my wedding and we said no, but he wouldn't take that for an answer. And halfway through the best man speech, he stood up and burst into a Venga Boys mega mix. So if you'd all like to join me in raising a glass to Talisa and Dappy, because we've got some news for you. <laughs> Gonna put some wheels in motion. Get ready, cause we're coming through, coming through, coming through. Hey now, hey now, hey what I say now. Happiness is just around the co- Can I place? Hey now, hey now, hey what I say now. We'll be there for you. Oh, we're going to Ibiza. Ricky ticky 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 whoa. Back to the island. Oh, ricky ticky 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 whoa we're gonna have a party ricky ticky 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 whoa in the mediterranean sea whoa we're going to ibiza boom 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 i wanna go boom boom let's spend the night together together in my room I would go as far as to say it was a lifeline for them. So Kane, what made you take the next step in your singing career? Well, it was my mum who inspired me to take up singing. Ding dong, ring a ding 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 dong. Ding dong, ring a ding 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 dong. What a curry in a hurry, extra sauce on the low. I just wish you would piss off. No, because you're driving me mad. I can't stand this anymore, Kane. You and your bloody singing. The neighbours have fucking complained, and the cat's packed up his bloody stuff and gone to the premier in down the road. You can't sing. You're loud, you're annoying, your nuts had to flush a bloody hearing aid down the toilet. You need to give up. <laughs> no, for fuck's sake, Kate, I'm being serious. Get out! So, from mum's heart to heart, I inferred that that means I should go and follow my dreams and travel the world. So, I decided to become a cruise ship singer. 
I've always been a fan of the waters. Indeed, I believe it runs in the family. My uncle Bill, after his divorce, threw himself over the white cliffs of Blackpool to be with the sea for eternity. So naturally, I got a job as a cruise ship singer. I spent weeks auditioning for some of the biggest names in the industry. Carnival, Princess, Disney, and then eventually, I... I hit the jackpot. I got a job on board the SS Sonia Fowler, sailing from Hull to Rotterdam every day. Yes, granted, I was a car park attendant, but the cameras were on me, which paid off when I got hit by a 1973 Ford Cortina. So, me and Sonia had words, and instead of suing, we came to a little agreement. I went up in the world, quite literally as well, from deck three to deck seven. I got a job as a cruise ship singer. I was performing from eight o'clock to 8.15 every morning, and the audiences went wild for me. So, that's how I did it. That's how I got my big break, both on the stage and in my leg in two places. So see, there and there. I was performing every day, Monday to Tuesday, and every other Thursday, not forgetting the third Sunday of every month. I was one of the biggest performers on the North Sea at the time. Yes, I had the occasional blip. Oh, like the time me and my cabin mate, Terry Katona, were caught snorting lemship. But apart from that, I was a smash hit. So how did you go from a singer on a ship to international superstar? Well, you know, it was just like any other show. I started off with my 80s number, Agadu, and how the audience went wild for my big opening. And then I did Bjork's It's Oh So Quiet, the Neighbours theme tune, a Ricky Martin B-side, and Alexandra Burke's 2008 X Factor winning original song, Hallelujah. And then I did my finale. A visual spectacular, a wonder for the ears. Choreography that would challenge that of Bolton Amateur Dramatics 1994 production of Starlight Express. The biggest thing seen on the North Sea since the Persian-Russian War of 1871. Verka Sajuka's 2007 Eurovision smash hit, Dancing Lasha Chumbai. Dancing! Zegan, Zegan, I hold Zegan, Zegan, Einstein. Zegan, Zegan, I hold Einstein, Drein. Zegan, Zegan, I hold up. Zegan, Zegan, I'm fine. Zegan, Zegan, I hold up. I'm fine, drying, dancing. I want to see, lash at some by. I want to see, lash at some by. I want to see, lash at some by. I want to see, dancing. Okay, happy end. It was smashing, really. I was performing most days from Hull to the Hook of Holland, from Ramsgate. Oh my, to Rotterdam, I was a global superstar. So naturally, they upload me onto the Tic Tac. That's the power of social media, you see. Anyway, I digress. Before you know it, I am the most viewed video on the internet. I'm bigger than Gangnam Style, more popular than Teddy Bear Ham. And yes, I did go around the world faster than Michael Palin. Allow me to set the scene for you. I am everywhere. TV, movies, ceremonial tea towels. I was perhaps more than Princess Di, hence why I gave myself the title of The People's Prince. 
and made headlines as the first male loose woman. Oh, I starred in the world premiere of Chicken Run the Musical, and I replaced Barry Scott as the spokesperson for Silip Bang. I then become the world's youngest billionaire. I've got golden records, platinum albums. I even have a tin statue of myself in my nan's garden. So how did it all go so wrong? Well, I do hate to say it, but I have to blame me Uncle Jim. I'm sorry, I hate to say it, but I have to do it. Me and Uncle Jim were always very close, you know, because Mum was... Uh, what did she say? She was, off, she was off training Shmoo at SeaWorld. So I spent a lot of time with Uncle Jim. And then I did in adulthood too. Uncle Jim was always my biggest supporter. It's just very unfortunate that Uncle Jim happens to look like a, um, a certain North Korean dictator, if you know what I mean. It's just very unfortunate. Uncle Jim is a great guy. He just has a very unfortunate appearance. Next thing you know, I wake up to a call from my manager. Hello, Manager Jen, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, a pizza express in Woking, impossible. Turns out to the press, it was possible. The next day, it was all over the papers, you know, the fake Wheel Times, the Weatherfield Gazette, the Mailey Dale. The Metro's headline was Dictator and Doorballs. Terrible, really. I had to cut all ties with Uncle Jim and indeed his wife, Auntie Kim. The fallout was awful. I had to go into hiding. I cannot say where it was, but I can confirm that it was not North Korea. So what is it that you've been up to since you've returned from hiding? Well, since coming back from Bolton, I've had to lie low, you know. I've been working on smaller projects. Indeed, I've taken up rapping. Here's one that I've been working on. Rapper's glasses. Rapper's hat. What's up, lads? The name's Kenny Mac. Yeah, I was cancelled, but guess what? I'm back. My uncle Jim's not from North Korea, and we enjoy dining in a walking pizzeria. Scat, scat, rap, rap, rap. Scooby, scooby, bap, bap, bap. Distance myself from Uncle Jim, who's not North Korean dictator John Gun Kim. See me on a stage performing near you, just like you would with Duncan from Blue. But I'm not Duncan or Mr. James to you. I'm MC Donald, and you know that's true. Boosh!